did you see what he did? Fires complete to J.T. Wall on their 35. He's going to drive and get on down the sideline, the 25, the 20, and into the, about the 15-yard line or 16-yard line. He stayed in bounds across the way. Go to Lumpkin. Somebody hit him right in the hole. He bounced out to the 20, to the 15. He's got a block to the 8, the 5. Touchdown, Lumpkin. Hands to the little tailback who cuts in. Browning, touchdown. Green going to take it. Going to give it to Brown. He found a hole. He's got 5. He's got 10, 15, 20, 25. Touchdown. to Noshon! Did he catch it? Yeah! Touchdown in the front right corner! Hello, my name is Brian McClendon. I'm the running back coach here at the University of Georgia. And today I would like to talk to you guys about the fundamental stuff that we do here at the University of Georgia to help our running backs become better running backs and to keep everybody safe in this physical game we call football. Well, of course, the first thing that we would need to do to become fundamentally correct is to focus on one of the simplest things, which I think is a lot overlooked, is the stance and the start of the running back. The stance and the start. Now, there's actually two types of stances and starts that we use here at the University of Georgia. One is the two-point stance, and one is the three-point stance, but we'll get into both of those. Right here, you see everybody getting into a two-point stance. Now, you don't need any equipment for this. The first line right here is, I, is normally my fullbacks because they're normally lined up in front of the tailbacks. The line behind them, five yards deep, is the tailbacks. And I just have everybody stand straight up. I want their feet a little bit wider than shoulder width apart, and then I want Oh, when, when, on, on my command, they're just going to get that. They're just going to bend at the waist and keep their hands right on it, right where I say their knee pads would be. And I'll just this, I'll just call ready down, and everybody gets just snaps down in a two-point stance. Now, in a two-point stance, the another thing that you want to make sure is that their eyes are always up, just so they can see the defense and see what's going on out there on the football field. All right. The next thing is I want slight air under the heel, so every, every, every motion is always forcing them to go downfield or positive motion, no wasted motion, all right? So that's, how, that's all I have everybody do. Again, everyone will be standing up straight. I'll stand everybody up. Then I'll say ready, down, and then everybody just snaps down in a two-point stance. Now, the start. The start again with the slight air under the heel. It's gonna force every step to go straight forward or to go exactly where we want them to go, whatever wherever the steps may be. So right here, you don't want anybody drop. You don't want anybody's weight dropping down. You don't want anybody taking those extra steps or what we call false steps. You want them going right now because we want everything to time up perfect. Uh, you know, a lot of stuff dealing with offense has a lot to do with timing. And I'll just have everybody snap down in a two-point stance, and then I'll give them a go command, and then on go, everybody just fires out about five yards to just to make sure we, we're not getting any false steps or anything coming out of our two-point stance. And this is just a tighter look at it. Again, if you look at, say, number 49 or 45 right here, right here in the front, nothing is, no, they are taking no false steps. Every, that first step, is coming straight out, straight off the football. Now, this, this is an actual transition from a two-point to the three-point stance. Uh, I'll just have everybody get in, in the same, their, their feet is, will be a little bit tighter in a three-point stance. It won't be wider than shoulder-width apart. I have their feet 
about shoulder width apart in, when they're about to get in a three-point stance. Stand everybody up. Ready? Two-point stance. Ready again? Get those elbows on the, on the knees. And then ready again, they get in the three-point stance. Ready? 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 And then I say go, and they come off the ball. Focusing on no false steps. Coming out of a three-point stance. Again, their body is, is very similar to where it was with those elbows on the knees, with that good with a good waistband. But coming off the ball nice and clean, no false stepping. Uh, the next drill I would do is taking a handoff. Again, this is something that's very, very, very important to uh, the start of any running play. Now, right here, again, you want uh, you always want your players to play with great body lean. You want them to play in a football position. That way they can cut side to side quicker. They can start up and start and stop quicker. Uh, they can do everything a little bit quicker because their body is in that, in that football position. So one thing, the first thing you will want to make sure they do coming out of that stance is raise. You don't want, you don't want them to raise up. So you want to make sure their body stays nice and low from getting this hand off. All right, next. You want to make sure the pocket is correct, all right? Now, whichever side the quarterback is on or the ball is carried on, that should be the open side. And when I say the open side, when I say the open side, that would be the side that the pocket that you see right here, the, the arm is up. That side should be up. That, that side arm should be up. All right? Now, when that arm is up, I want that, I want that thumb I want the knuckle on that thumb to be at right where the laces would be on those shoulder pads. I want it that high, and I want to get that elbow up as far as possible. The reason you don't want that elbow to be low, because that quarterback is going to be sticking his arm out. If, you, if your elbow hits his arm, it could knock the ball out and cause a fumble in the backfield. So you want that elbow to be as high as possible. Next, I want... Right here, you want that the 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 hand that's on that's under that's underneath that's securing the ball. You want that hand to be right at the belt buckle, right right where the belt is on on the football pants. You want and you want those hands to be nice and flat, and be able to roll over the football. And when I say roll over the football, I want your body actually dropping a little bit so you're not running straight into the ball. Because if you run straight into the ball and make it and make that surface too hard. That ball could again bounce out and cause a fumble in the backfield. So you want you want their body to actually give a little bit and actually tuck their stomach in a little bit and push their shoulders down and roll over the football when they're getting the handoff. Again, they should not be looking at the football. All right, those eyes should be up, eyes should be downfield, and they have keys to read on each run play. But you so you you do not want to see them looking at the football at all and taking a hand off. Now this is a drill that I, that I help emphasize that. And this is run polish. All I would do, I have, I have my tape right here, and this tape, it's, this tape signifies off, offensive line. So it have a little block right here, have a C on it for center, two G's on each side for guard, and two T's on each side for tackle. And I actually have a, a block out here with the E on it, it stands for a tight end. And so just, so just so my players know which side and which hole and, uh, and everything that they're actually going to. Now after this tape, you'll see some, a set of cones out here that's 10 yards deep. All right, you, after they get the ball, you want them to run all the way through the cones. You don't, want, you, you, you don't want to start a bad habit of people just getting the ball and just turn around and stop it. Now this is a ball security drill. Of course, this is a very, very, very important part of the game as well. Is ball security. Now most drills that we do help emphasize ball security. Now when I say ball security, I want to emphasize three points of pressure. Three points of pressure. One point of pressure is being where the hand is on the tip of the ball. Alright? Hand over the tip of the ball. I, I, want, I want that hand over the tip of the ball being one, one point of pressure. You spread your fingers out and cover up as much of that ball as you possibly can when you have that ball in your hand. Point number two being the forearm, all right? The forearm being one point of pressure, and I don't want to see the, the back end tip of the ball come out. 
That means that, means that, that uh, ball is not tight and it's not, it's, it doesn't have good pressure on the forearm and coming down here to the elbow. The next, that third point of pressure being your body. I want that ball high. I want it right there on, on, on his chest muscle. Keep it high and tight. Ball emphasizing three points of pressure. One, two, three, with that ball high and tight. Now this is a point that, now this drill just helps one with, with players work on keeping their balance. All right? Keeping their balance. And two, a lot of fumbles occur when that player is, is fighting for those extra yards. So anytime you anytime you could anytime you could put a drill in where players do stuff naturally to fight for extra yards and you emphasize ball security, it, it's always a positive. It is always a positive. So this is the drill to emphasize them keeping balance and keeping that ball security nice and high and tight as well. I call it the pop-up drill. All right, you have the ball carrier with the ball in his hand, and you tell him, all right, put, put the ball in your left arm, and I want that right palm on the ground, and then you lift the, you lift the same foot up that, that uh, that's hand, that's hand is on the ground. So if your right palm's on the ground, your right foot is up. Your right foot is up. It helps throw them off balance just a little bit more. You want them popping up, keeping those eyes up, popping up, and emphasizing ball security. Now, well, I normally do it three times. I say, all right, pop up three times, and I want you finishing, and give them a set of cones back here that they finish through. Is it again just, switch, just switching ball hands? The ball's in the right hand now with that left hand down and that left leg up. Keeping those eyes up, popping up off the ground, emphasizing three points of pressure the whole time. Now getting into pass catching, all right, one route that we have is the hook route. The hook route is designed to keep, hold down the underneath coverage, and then again, if that underneath coverage gets too deep, then that quarterback, uh, when I say check it down, we'll be, we be the quarterback's last resort, and he, and, and he can hit us with room to run. Now our hook route, all right, is always design, designed off a of certain protection. All right, now we're going we're gonna to go through and check our protection with our first step getting wide, first step getting wide, and then we'll come down and then hook it up three yards past the line of scrimmage. Three yards past the line of scrimmage. Now, again, you always want to emphasize everything that you talked a little bit before. So this guy's in a two-point stance. Make sure he's in a good two-point stance. Make sure his eyes are up. Make sure he doesn't fall step when he comes out. All right. Now, right here, our, at, when, most of the time when we have a hook route, especially in this, in, uh, when we're in the gun, you want to check his alignment. Now, our alignment, we're going to line up right behind the tackle, and we're going to line up on the quarterback's toes. All right, just makes it easy, and you always know where to line up at when you're in the gun. Biggest thing, you don't want to get too close to the quarterback or too wide the way you can't help out when you do have to actually protect in, uh, in certain protection. But right here, hook route, you're just getting a little width. So make sure you don't get hung up in all the rushing D linemen and the offensive linemen and make sure you're not knocking any offensive linemen off their blocks. Getting through the line nice and clean and just turning and hooking up. Right here, I, I just have full backs on one side and then my uh, running backs on the other side. You could, you could mix and match it any way you like it. Uh, I just split it up right here just to make sure everybody got as many reps as we could. Shows it from a little tighter angle. Making sure you're looking that ball all the way in, catching it with your hands. You don't want to catch the ball off your body. And there's a great example of us looking the ball all the way in to the tuck and then getting upfield and running. But another point of emphasis, you don't want to get you don't want this route to get too deep. Again, it's designed to hold the coverage underneath. And if that coverage gets too deep, then you're wide open to get the ball. So don't let them get four, five, six yards downfield. You want to keep them at three. Now day two, I mean day one, day two, day three, and day four, they will all be the exact same drills when it comes to uh, starts and stands, when, come, when it comes to uh, the ball security, and when it comes to, uh, but when it comes to the routes, then that's when it gets in, into the different day. Uh, hook route will be day one. Circle route, this will be day two.
Now, circle routes are a little more difficult. Uh, the reason being is because it, it depends on what the defense does. The big difference between this and the hook route is if you get man coverage, then the route breaks out. All right, you have to break out and then create you some separation because again, you're going to be a check down for the quarterback. You're going to be a check down for the quarterback. Now, right here, you see him getting, again, getting with, not getting hung up in all that, and, and, and all the trash happening over there at the line of scrimmage. And, and you want to, since you're breaking out, you want this guy to be working at the outside shoulder of whoever's playing him the man to man coverage. Right here, he's working at the outside shoulder and he's going to step and break out. Now, when you come in and break out, you come out and you'll look for the ball, but that doesn't mean you slow down. All right, that does not mean you slow down at all. You actually should pick your speed up, but you should keep your speed because you're going to outrun everybody else. All right, again, that's man-to-man -man coverage. If you come out slow, even though if you do achieve any separation and when you step and break, all right, he, you'll give him time to make, up, make back up, to make, to make the distance back up because you're coming out slow. So you want to come out and keep your speed. Right here, you're just going to see another great example of him getting with a nice stick and break. He actually giving a great head move, giving a great step and head move to come out and, and achieve that separation because, you, you, again, the only time you'll break out is if it's man coverage. I always tell my guys, you have time. You have plenty of time to get up there and give a good stick and break and, not, and you don't want to rush into this route because, again, you are a check down for the quarterback. All right, you're the quarterback's last resort, so you don't want to get out so fast all right, and then not do a good job with your step and, and achieving that separation. You don't want to come out so fast that you're so wide for the quarterback. Now the arrow route will be introduced day three. The arrow route is actually designed to stretch the defense and uh, stretch the flat defender. In every defense, they always have a guy, uh, have a guy who's responsible to cover the flat, so the, uh, it, it, the shallow outside area of the defense. All right, this route is actually designed to put th put that guy under some pressure. All right, a lot of routes you'll have a guy in the flat and you'll have a guy running behind the guy who's supposed to be responsible for covering that flat to put that guy in sort of a bind. So you want to get out this route as fast as you possibly can to put this guy in a bind as, as fast, as, like I said, as fast as you possibly can. Put this guy under a little stress and make his life a little more difficult because we, we haul him butt out there. Now this route is designed to be three yards deep or three yards past the line of scrimmage. So again, it's important to always have your line of scrimmage out there. That's why I have my tape out there, just so I know where the line of scrimmage at and I can judge how deep or how shallow these guys are actually getting on the route. Now this route, you'll actually turn and face, I mean, you actually sort of turn your back and turn your head towards the defense. Now the scat route, this would be the last route going in, that's day four. The scat route is very similar to uh, actually what we're trying to do with the arrow route, but the only difference is we're not actually not turning our back to the defense anymore. We're going to actually turn and run and get wide as fast as we possibly can again to try to put stress on that flat defender. But with this one, we're not turning our back to the defense. We're actually going to remain in the backfield. Now with the scat route, you're actually going to, use from, from the gun or from this position, you're going to lose one yard. So you'll lose a yard of, of, of ground, get wide as fast as you possibly can, and then turn around and get those eyes back so you'll be able to track the ball. All right, if you get those eyes around a little too, a little too early, then you may not get out, get out there as fast as you can. So you, you want to stress these guys getting wide as fast as you possibly can. Get wide. All right, the reason you like, the reason you may like this route instead of an arrow route, or the reason we have both, is because we like our, we like to get the running backs in space with those flat defenders one on one. A lot of times when, when, when they catch the ball right here, 
one on one on a scat route, a lot, all their speed is going forward. And then again, they can face and see that flat defender so they can go ahead and make that guy miss in space. Now these running drills can actually be done any day. And all you need is, uh, is there's some cones and some agilities. When I say agilities, it's these big old bags right here. And again, any drill that we do is focusing, always focusing on ball security. All right, running backs, you have to do a lot, they have to do a good job of running, actually have to, do, have to do a great job of keeping their feet up, going in and out of traffic, and then also just period, have to do a good job of pumping their feet. All right, but again, you always focus on them keeping their eyes up, not looking down at the bags, and keeping good ball security, maintaining those three points of pressure. Now right here, you just have a, a, a line of agilities that you want them to go across. All right, I, ha I have a line here, I mean a cone here, and I have always have a cone down where, they ha where I want those guys finished. Now this drill, I have them facing me. They turn and go across, across the bags one way, come back the exact same way, then I actually have them turn and run, getting those knees up with those eyes up, turning and running all the way through the finish line. All right. Now this is a guy. I, I had him adjust his ball security because I wanted his, I wanted that hand covering up as much ball, as much of the ball as possible. All right. And then he's going to look all the way in into that three points of pressure, making sure I have those three points of pressure, and he's going to get his eyes up. And what you'll see me explaining is I want I want that good body lean, and like I said, that good football position the whole time through these bags. I don't want them standing up just because they're, they're, they're in motion. Good football position right here. He's not moving that ball hand too much, and he's staying nice and square, keeping those eyes on me. He's not down here looking at the bags. And then he's turning and running, getting those knees up, maintaining the ball security all the way through the finish line. And right here, it's just them going back the other way. Just turning and running. Turning and running all the way through. This is actually another drill that we'll do. Again, focusing on three points of pressure. And what happens a lot, especially when, when you're in, in, any, in any, run, any time you're running the ball, everything's not going to go particularly as planned. Uh, you just have guys running up, and then they, they may have to sidestep or go lateral a little bit. And right here, this focuses on those guys going lateral that, that those times that you do have to go lateral, get forced to go lateral, but you're still facing downfield, you're still facing the line of scrimmage. You're not actually turning your pads and trying to run to the sideline and get squeezed, so you're able to get upfield as quick as possible. And I, again, I just have those agilities, have those same agilities, those same bags, and have them running up and sidestepping, running up and sidestepping. You want to keep those guys nice and tight, to the bags, and you don't want those guys, again, the reason you don't want those guys getting too wide is because the hole may open up in the middle of your sidestep. You want that guy to go ahead and put his foot down and get north. Just have everybody doing it. Again, focusing on eyes up, all right? Not swinging that ball. Not swinging that ball hand. You don't want that ball to become exposed. Maintaining those three points of pressure, maintaining that good football position. And then right here, we're getting a little too wide from the, from the bags. We're getting a little too wide, and he, he, he started to try to tighten it up at the end. But it's a nice job, nice and under control. Eyes up, and finishing all the way through. Now, this is an example of the same thing, the exact same thing, coming back. But at the end, I want those guys finishing the runoff. So I have two guys with, with grab two of those agilities we were using, stand down here and actually act like two guys trying to converge on them and trying to make a tackle. And I want to drop my pads. I, I don't want to drop my head like we're doing here. I want to drop my pads and finishing off the run, exploding through those guys. You want to make those guys tackle you and not just give in just because you see two guys coming at you. So you, want, you see those two guys converging, you want to drop your pads and accelerate all the way through those guys. 
But those are just a couple of drills that we do here at the University of Georgia that, that should help you uh, uh, help tremendously with a lot of stuff that you try to do as far as running backs. It's a little different position. The running backs have to be uh, have to be the tough guys on the team, and they have to be able to run and catch the ball and be able to block all the big guys at the at the same time. And uh, these are a couple of drills that allow you to get better at those, and so you can have the best running backs that you possibly can on on your team. David Green fakes, bootlegs out left, going to run through. There's a man open, touchdown! Big Watson caught a ball running right to left. Benjamin Watson. And so Green fakes it, and we're going to go wrong. Man wide open, touchdown in the corner. Green takes it, comes back, throws down the middle. The man wide open, and we are going to get a touchdown. Stafford looks, and he's going to throw to Marcos Miller, who caught it. Stafford fakes. There's a man open. Touchdown in the end zone to Marcos Milner. And we're going to run a long pass, and it's complete in the 12-yard line. We got a receiver down on the two. Stafford going to take it. Got time. Looks. Good. Back of the end zone. Marcos Milner high in the air and hung on. Play action fake. 